And a very good evening. Yes, indeed, it is Tuesday. It's 9 p.m. and it's the 1st of April. Yes, did you spot any uh, any weird things happening today? Um, I've got a few little things that were passed on to me um, to pass on to you. Um, but uh, yes, normally it's a day where the people take out full page adverts and strange things like spaghetti trees and all that other stuff that goes on. Um, but that's before 12 o'clock, isn't it? And it's past 12 o'clock now. So, yeah, it's not happening on tonight's show. But I will be um, showing you a few little things that did occur today. Yeah. Uh, and I have uh, Davey with me. Say hello, Davey. Hello, everyone. Yay. It's Davey. And uh, we're going to be doing, or Davey's going to be doing, a live Juicy Juicy in part one. And then there's um, a rather interesting one that Davey filmed <laughs> previously <laughs> <laughs> for part two. Yeah. And all that is coming up after uh, after these. It's Vapor Scene. You're watching Vapor Tools TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Yes, it is Tuesday. It's nine o'clock or just gone, and you're watching Vapor Scene here on Vapor Trails TV. Uh, and as I said pre show, and just now, um, I have Davey with me again tonight. Say hello again, again, Davey. Hello again, again, Davey. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be talking about uh, a couple of news stories that have appeared over the last few days. Uh, and uh, we're going to start with this one that's been tweeted quite a lot over the past 48 hours, and it's from the Liverpool Echo. Yeah. No smoke without fire. Kids are caught puffing on e-cigarettes in school. There's a surprise. And uh, I won't go through the whole article, but uh, here is the text of said thing. Um, today in response, its authors warned that devices were becoming prominent part of youth culture. Uh, and, uh, and they added that the study showed children were not only getting hold of e-cigarettes, but a lack of awareness about the, their potential risks, relying on anecdotal evidence from their friends and family. Um, and at the bottom section there, he said, history was repeating itself with much of what happened with tobacco advertising in the 40s and 50s, mirroring that of e-cigarettes with modern day Marlboro men advertising vaping and celebrity endorsement. Hmm. What shook me was the last part of the article, uh, which is this. One youngster quoted, a boy aged 14 from Liverpool said, there are many people in my form that have no experience with smoking or nothing. And I was speaking about my pen, e-cigarette, and he took and he went, look at mine. And I was like, I've never seen you smoke before. Now I'm noticing the people in school with these pens, they're on the rise. And another teenager, a boy aged 15 from St. Helens said, I've tried one, a friend's, at a party when I was a bit drunk. There's a lot of it in our school. Um, I've tried one, a friend's, at a party when I was a bit drunk. There's a lot of it in our school. Now, firstly, if he was a bit drunk at 15, where is he getting the alcohol from? Um, because if you look at the... Uh, the regulations on alcohol and it's there there we go alcohol and young people if you're under 18 it's against the law for someone to sell you alcohol to buy or try to buy alcohol or for an adult to buy or try to buy alcohol for you unless of course you're 16 to 17 having a meal with your parents and you can drink beer wine or cider in certain places <sighs> what do you think Davey 
Oh, it's another one of those things, isn't it? It's think of the children. It right. It says it all there that children or teenagers are going to try things that they're not supposed to try. And that kid has said it himself. He was drunk at a party. You know, it doesn't matter what you say and do. Kids are going to try and stuff that they're not supposed to try. That, it, that's what it all boils down to for me. Yes. Now, I remember, I remember years ago, um, back in the late 80s, when I was doing my script writing for a night job. Uh, and during the day, I was funding that by delivering stuff all over London. And I used to deliver to this little shop. Uh, and it was like a kind of mini mart, come news agents, come Greek delicatessen, all in one. And the lady behind the counter used to sell single Bensons for 50p. That's still happening today, and it will still happen tomorrow, and it will still yeah. happen years from now. Uh, yeah, uh, I've also absolutely. heard of ice cream vendors selling cigarettes and other things to children um, all around the country. And that has happened before, it's happening now, and it will continue to happen. Um, now, the day of the BBC vape meets, I went to the one in Leeds, and on the way back, I strolled through Leeds Open Market, uh, and I always said I came across, but that's the wrong words. Um, I saw some young people buying an, uh, an Ishish pen from the, the market stall, and it was quite clear that half the market stall was kind of drug paraphernalia related items, bongs and such like, uh, and the other half was e-cigs and Ishish pens, and I, I have no doubt that certain vendors unscrupulously would sell to under 18s. Most yeah. of the vendors, the good vendors, don't do that. They've got a voluntary thing. Now, when it comes in, eventually, that it will be illegal to sell to under 18s, then that might change their minds a little bit if they face fines and such like. Um, but whatever happens, whether it is an underage thing or not, kids will always smoke, they'll always try vaping, they'll always try illegal drugs, and they'll always drink. Yeah, that they'll always getting. find a way. Yeah, indeed. Just like we used to do, like you just said. We used to do it, and the kids of future generations are going to do the same thing. Well, I was six foot when I was 12, so I looked quite old. Oh, you got away with it. <laughs> so I got away with buying cigarettes, and I got away with going to the pub and everything else because I was six foot, and I was not a, not a small lad at all. So I got away with it. Not necessarily saying it's the right thing to do if you're under the ages of you know, the legal limits and everything. Um, I'm just saying how it was for me. Um, I didn't really start smoking until I was about 15. So, you know, I didn't smoke at 12, but I was drinking copious amounts of lager <laughs> because yeah. I could. Um, but, you know, kids are always going to do that, aren't they? They're always going to do that. They so, absolutely are, yeah. I yeah. mean, that, that's another thing. I was um, going to the school to pick up my kids and there's a little park area that I have to walk through. And there was a group of kids there, no older than 13, 14, and they were drinking lager. Where did they get it from? You know, it, it happens. Kids are going to do it. Yes, they And are. they'll find a way. Yes. They'll, they, yeah, they'll, they always will. They'll either find somebody who's big enough and looks old enough to go and buy it, um, or uh, they'll go in and certain shops will sell it to them. Let's have a look yeah. at what chat is saying. Uh, Yoda's saying, keep, keep calm and roop on. Uh, and Neil, Neil Rolf, it's part of growing up. And you're right, there's lots of things that you know you try when you're kids. Um, some things you should, some things you shouldn't. Um, <laughs> now, Leanna Murray, Papa Thompson uh, was 5 foot 11 at 12. Didn't get any taller after that, though. And it's a good thing she started smoking or she'd been 7 foot. <laughs> <laughs> they always told me that smoking would stunt my growth, you know, and I'm 6 foot 5. Um, I've, so I've only grown 5 inches since I was 12. There you go. What's an inch here and there, you know? Anyway. Hey, don't go there. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to the next article I have here, um, which was also tweeted quite a lot. Uh, and it's this, and you have to kind of read the whole article. So I won't go through every bit of it because it's quite long. Um, but you need to read it carefully because it's actually a pop um, and it's not, uh, it's not by the person. So have a look. It's on Silogs. And it's called The New Victorians and the Public Health Dichotomy. Uh, and it's by someone called Tanya Brown, and it's posted in Policy and Politics. Yeah. Uh, and this is to do with Lord Warner, who said a lot of this. 
Lord Warner, a former health minister under the Blair government, has co-written a report for the centre-right think tank Reform, saying that the NHS is unable to cope with the workload placed on it, and there is no money from the tax system to give it more, and that we should introduce a flat user fee of £10 per month. He also pointed out in the slot on the BBC Breakfast News programme that it, it would make people who smoke, drink and eat unhealthy diets take responsibility for themselves and mend their ways. He didn't waggle his finger at the camera like a disappointed headmaster, but he might as well have. He might as well have. Now, I'm going to go to the end section on this, uh, and it's worth looking at the whole thing. Uh, and I know, Davey, you've read the whole thing. Um, but yep. the last section, uh, or the last section before, um, in short, if the Victorian poor were poor, it was their fault. Nothing to do with the towns they lived in, the factories they worked in, or the lack of regulation for the gin palaces they frequented to escape from just how awful their, their lives were. It was their own fault for not being clean enough, not working hard enough, not having the moral fibre to live a good life, not pulling themselves up by their bootstraps. And the final bit is uh, this. And she says, how times have changed. Because we all know that if you get lung cancer, you're stupid and should have never smoked, despite the ubiquitous advertising that told you how cool it was for a good 30 years. If you're obese, it's your own lack of control and nothing to do with the advertising of processed snack foods for your convenience in your hectic life. Everywhere you go and nothing, whatever you do, with the fact that you live in a city full of traffic and the nearest green space is a bus wide away. The fear of being hit by a lorry on your bike and the local council had to close the leisure centre. If you drink, then it's your own fault. You're getting a liver condition. Not the supermarket deals on cheap booze and the idolisation of alcohol as something to turn you into a social superstar. So yes, Lord Warner, we deserve to be made to pay for our bad lifestyle choices and maybe that will help us gain more moral fibre and pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. Um, but she also says... But wouldn't it be so much better to fund our struggling NHS by closing down the tax loopholes that make international chocolate peddlers such vast profits? The corporate avoidance schemes that allow breweries to sell all those kinds of lager so cheaply in the first place. Wouldn't it be better not only to tell people what they to do a, leader, uh, a healthier lifestyle, but also to, you know, do something to actually make the easiest choice for them? And when I was reading that, when I was reading that the first time, it's like, well... You know, some people get lung cancer and they've never smoked. They've never been anywhere near a cigarette. There's other things that they can get lung cancer from. You know, there's asbestosis. There's all sorts of other reasons why you could end up with lung cancer. Um, so to kind of tart everyone with the same smoking brush is, is wrong, really. What do you think, Davey? I was the same, mate. When I first read that, I had to read it a few times to actually get the point she was making. Um, but what interested me about it was there's a comment at the bottom of it, and it disappeared. It's been deleted. Oh, it's gone. But someone said that they disagreed with what she'd written um, and said, but how about a flat rate for heavy smokers? And so, I think that's it's stupid. So if I was still smoking, would I be a heavy smoker? Because, you know, clinically, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm obese, aren't I? I eat too much. I eat the wrong stuff. It's my fault. Well, I do. I, I drink every night. <laughs> yeah. I eat the wrong stuff. And I used to smoke. But I don't smoke anymore. So you're a double whammy instead of a triple whammy. Yeah. I'm just a, <laughs> a double whammy whammy with extra <laughs> mayo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, no one forces anyone to eat fast food. And the people who claim it's the fast food company's fault that they're fat, um, you know, hasn't learned that if you put a burger in, you've then got to do enough exercise to get that burger out again. Um, so let's see what chat is saying. But at uh, the end of the day, it's it's a lifestyle choice. It's people's choice to do what they want to do. That's the thing, isn't it? I mean, you can't take that away from people. No. It is a lifestyle choice. Uh, and, and smoking and vaping or drinking um, or taking hard drugs or parachuting, or power sending, base jumps, um, skiing, snowboarding, ice skating, tobogganing, all the things that are dangerous, all the Winter Olympic sports that are dangerous, our lifestyle choice. Look at yeah. that young girl, one of one of our skiers who fell and had a, 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 a bad injury and she couldn't compete. 
look at the, I think it was a French girl who ended up um, seriously, seriously ill um, from uh, doing her, one of her jumps that went wrong. So, you know, everything we do is a lifestyle choice. Everything yeah, we do exactly. could have a consequence. Um, and, you know, vaping for us is changing our nicotine habits into something much safer than lit tobacco. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. So, yes, those are the two news stories. Um, I got some other stuff. Now, this could be April Fools, I don't know. But I ordered these yesterday. Yeah, little pair of headphones um, because uh, the ones I've got in don't fit terribly well. And, you know, when you're doing Skype, you need to be able to hear it back and everything. Um, so I ordered those yesterday for delivery today. And what turned up? That turned up. 10 A4 exercise books. Now, headphones, exercise book. Headphones, exercise book. Was it someone at the, <laughs> at the warehouse having an April Fool's on me? I don't know. But um, yes, I was most annoyed. <laughs> most annoyed. But um, there were some other things as well. Uh, I saw this earlier. Yeah. Tab lights have created a left-handed e-cigarette. For those of you that are left-handed, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a really good thing. Now, the strange thing is, and you can't see this, Davey, but she's actually using it with the right hand. <laughs> So it is, in fact, ambidextrous. Or is it just, in fact, an April Fool? Yeah, could well be, couldn't it? And then on UK Vapors, Row Jeans on UK Vapors today. So there was a sale today only. Everything was two for the price of three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the old days. And, um, yeah, there was this other video, which I think is actually quite important. Uh, so I'm going to play this out now. Uh, this is Matt Gloggles. Uh, have a little look. Hiya folks, uh, just another quick uh, video and this time what I'm going to talk about is the, um, the tobacco products directive and the new regulations that are coming in uh, to do with e-liquid. Now as we know they're going to bring in a maximum strength of e-liquid and um, they've set that at 20 milligrams per mil and you know that's just going to be too low for a lot of people. Um, Quite often I use 36 and, and a lot of people would much rather use a, a, a 36 strength and uh, you know that's not going to be available when the new regulations come in with a maximum strength of, of 20. Now they must think we're stupid because I've figured out a very easy way uh, to get around these regulations. Now, say for example you've got a bottle of 18. Now 18 is only half the strength of 36. Um, so it's just not going to cut it for a lot of people. So if you get one bottle of 18 and another bottle of, of 18, so you've got two bottles, and mix them together, you've got two times 18 and you'll end up with one bottle of 36. Simple. They must think we're stupid. Uh, same, I mean, a lot of people use 24. And you could use exactly the same principle. You get a bottle of 12 and another bottle of 12. Mix them together and you'll get one bottle of 24 because two 12s equals 24. Simple. <laughs> and that was Matt. <laughs> he put a video out earlier. And I wonder how many people actually thought that was correct. Two bottles of uh, 18 makes one bottle of 36. <laughs> but it made me chuckle. Anyway, there you go. So we're rapidly heading towards the ad break. Um, but before we do, um, we're going to be doing a live Juicy Juicy. Yeah. Um, are you ready, Dave? No. You're not. Well, get ready <laughs> because you've got about 30 seconds after this. Are you ready? Yeah, I've got it. Warning. The following segment on tonight's Vapor Scene is being carried out by a total non-professional and we here at Vapor Charles TV in no way encourage you to try this at home. You have been warned. Juicy 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 Okay. There's a website called herbaltides.co.uk and they do a thing called Vape Nominate. And it's a mystery juice 
They don't tell you what's in it. All they say on the website is, why not give your taste buds a kick with the latest random but funny experience? So, stupid me bought some. Two ninety nine, and all it is, literally, that. It's a bottle. No labelling, nothing on there. So, this is what I'm going to do live now for you. There's definite cinnamon and there's fruit. That's really strong cinnamon. Okay, well, I'll do it on camera. There's no rules on this one, but I'll do it on camera anyway. Got a little dripper on a mini ego, so I don't ruin anything good just in case. There we go. Drip tip on. Right, here we are. Ooh, top. A top. Definitely cinnamon and that I think it's apple and chili Ooh. that's not a nice juice and I will gladly pass it on to anyone who wants to try it because I'm not trying that again I'm, I'm sorry I can't do that again that's even worse than the other one I did that's burning my throat literally burning the back of my throat is that it, Davey? Just well, one, that's it. one, I, I one hit. Right, I'll do another one. Two drops. Go on, do another one. I'll tell you what. Just for chat, I'll do a nose hit. Ooh, here we go. That's not going through. Oh, God. That's it. Marco, that's it. Oh. <laughs> I think I can leave Davey to blow his nose. Uh, and while we, do, while we do that, we'll go to the ads. See you in two. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. 
Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. And welcome back to part two. Yes, uh, Davey's okay, aren't you, Davey? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy that? No, not at all. Not one tiny little bit. Uh, well, very boring, said, uh, now off to A&E. Uh, Darren Stone said he was proud of you. Uh, Yoda, <laughs> applause for Davey. Uh, and Neil Rolf liked it as well. He thought it was hilarious. Uh, and uh, Entropy, I think we have our first fatality. No, he's still breathing, Entropy. Yeah, I'm he's still, still breathing. breathing. Yeah. I'm okay. Uh, and uh, Monster Rob, bucket for Davey, more like. <laughs> uh, Mike Brown liked it as well. So, uh, yes. So, we must just say that, uh, yeah, vaping on something that uh, you don't know exactly what it is, is a little bit dodgy, you know. Uh, if you know... I, w I would like to point out, though, I do know the guy that made it, so... Okay. I know it was okay. So, Davey knows the guy who made it, so... Not so bad, but yeah, it's not uh, not something you want to kind of just order from a random company. No. Um, no. And we do have another juicy juicy from Davy, which is a pre-record, um, which is very good. Um, but yes, so talking about juice on last week's show, we uh, go back to that. Yeah, on last week's show, we did the first part of the nicotine testing video, uh, and everyone in chat said they wanted part two. Yeah, so uh, here it is coming up, part two first part of this is testing a 24 milligram juice that I made from 75 and then the second test in this video is testing a 24 milligram pre-made juice from a vendor uh, and uh, yeah interesting results have a look okay so if you remember last time we tested the 75 milligram e-liquid or the, the base nick uh, and it came out at around about 74 um, plus or minus so I've now made up just a 5 mil sample of 24 which I've mixed down using uh, 75 and some VG again I've got 10 milliliters of deionized water and this time I'm going to put it straight in I'm using I'm testing two milliliters this time um, the, the website recommends you test two mil at this strength and one mil at strengths of 36 and above so we're just going to give that a good shake to mix it up with the deionized water and like I said earlier you can use deionized or distilled I'm using deionized because this is what most people are going to have readily available and it seems to work given the results of the first test so that's that mixed in this time I shall put in seven drops of the blue one two three four five six seven seven drops of bromiaethyl blue you get actually loads of that <laughs> this will stain by the way it will stain fingers and it will stain things that are porous so that's why I've got this on a little plastic tray with some paper down so that is now mixed and we've got the blue toilet water scenario again and then we're going to go to our acid and again I'm going to start it with three millilitres of the acid and I'm taking it way past three on the syringe as you can see just so I can ensure I have no air bubbles whatsoever and I can get an exact reading I'm getting set a bubble out I've got one right at the bottom of the syringe and it's just working its way up right so I've got it worked all, all the way up to the top now I'm just taking the syringe down to exactly three very slowly so we're now at exactly three milliliters I'm just going to pop that down for a second while I put the top on okay so I'm, I'll do this half a milliliter at a time I think 
to start off with. So we've gone from three to two and a half. Give it a little shake. Still blue. Two and a half to two. And give it a shake. Two and a half to one and a half. And again, we can see it changing slowly. I'm going to go down to one milliliter. Okay, we're getting close now. So I'm going to do this now in point one. So that's point one. Point two. Point three. Point four. Point five. I still think that's quite green. Point six. And there we go. Point six. So two point six milliliters gives us the color that we need which is that lovely yellow color. And we'll do the calculation again. And this time, when you use two mils of liquid, you multiply by a different number. This time we're going to multiply by 9.735. So we've used 2.6 mils of the acid. So 2.6 multiplied by 9.735, 9.735, and that gives us 25.311. And using 2 mil, there is a margin of error of 1, between 1 and 2 milligrams, plus or minus. So that, again, is in the ballpark of 24 milligrams. So the kit itself is um, it's pretty accurate if you take in consideration the plus or minus. Um, so the final test that we will do is I will test a pre-made juice and we'll see what that comes out like. So I'll get all set up again and I'll see you in a few. Okay, we are now into our final test and we're going to test some 24 milligram bought juice. And at this point in time, I'm not going to tell you whose it is, because I don't think that's fair. So first thing is we're going to add our 10 milliliters of deionized water. Again, you could use distilled. We're going to use two milliliters of said e-liquid. And I'm just going to squeeze that in and move it around and mix it while I'm doing that because it is quite thick being VG. Give that a good mix around and you can see it actually smells really nice. <laughs> I know what's in here. Um, see it's a nice little colour there and again we're going to use seven drops of the blue. So. Almost had one then. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven drops of the blue. Give that a good mix round. And because it's already a funny colour, I'm going to add another drop. Make it eight. Give it a fighting chance. There we go. So, eight drops. We've got another measured three mils of acid and I'm going to take it down quickly to um, one and a half mils because I know it's going to need that. So that's one and a half mils. And you can see we've still got a bluey greeny colour. So I'm going to take it down to one mil. Yep. 
again still bluey greeny and then we'll take it down a millilitre at a time so that's 2.1 2.2 .2. Two point three, two point four, two point five, two point five mils, and we're still a little bit greeny, so I'm going to take it down another milliliter, two point six. And that's pretty much in the ballpark. So, 2.6, bear in mind the colouring was darker when we started. So 2.6 looks about right. And that's why you get this white cup, because it allows you to see the colour a lot better. And you can see there is that kind of urine type colour. So again, we'll do our calculation, uh, and it is the same as the last time, which is the 2.6. So 2.6 millilitres of acid multiplied by 9.735. 9.735 gives us 25.311. Uh, and I have to tell you that this juice is a 24 milligram juice. Um, so that, with the margin of error of plus or minus two to four milligrams, again, is in the ballpark. So, what can I tell you from that? What can we? What conclusions can we draw from from that? Um, the kit works. If you want to test your nicotine juice, and I think it's very important if you're using strengths up to 75, like I do to make sure that what you're starting with is right. And that allows you to get the calculations spot on for when you're mixing down your own mixes. And the second test that we did was a test of 24 milligram that I'd made using the 75. And that came up to be as it should. This particular pre-made juice has come up to be as it should. But I must add some caveats to that. Um, while I do that, I'm just going to put the rest of this acid in the bottle. Certain juices, especially ones with a high acidity, are going to throw the results out. If you don't clean all your instruments, wash them beforehand, and you've got stuff on from the last time, that's going to affect your results. What doesn't appear to affect the results is using deionized water. And that's something that I was concerned about, but seeing as this is in the ballpark, I'm happy with that. So all in all, not a bad test. And uh, I think we shall go back to me in the studio. Ta-ta! Yes, that was the uh, second part of the nicotine testing bid uh, that was requested. Um, like I said in there, it's a good kit if you want to test, um, if you buy a litre, say, of 75 and you want to make sure that what you're starting out with is correct or you just want to make sure that what you're buying is right, uh, then uh, not a bad little punt, I have to say. Um, I did buy that for me, Sig Wizard, and I've noticed that it wasn't available from them anymore, um, but other vendors may still have the kit or you might be able to buy, well, you can buy the individual um, bits, the... 0.12N sulfuric acid and the bromonthal blue. Uh, you can buy that from certain vendors in small quantities um, fairly cheaply. So there you go. Um, right, we are running out of time and I've got, uh, I've got another juicy juicy for you. Now, this is another one from Davy, uh, and it's, <laughs> it's rather funny. And the juice that he's going to do uh, is one that we sent from his friends. And the, the bottle and everything else is chip compliant. Um, not like the other one, um, although we knew where it came from. Um, so uh, just bear that in mind as you're watching this one and uh, have a little laugh. It's juicy, juicy. Juicy, 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 juicy. 
Hello, 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 hello. I'm doing a juicy juicy today that I've been putting off for quite a while because uh, I really don't want to do it. Um, after I did um, those juices from America a few weeks ago, uh, you know, the bacon and tomato soup, um, I got sent a juice which is called Toe Jam and Hurl. There it is. There's not a lot left in it, but um, it came with a little note. Mr. Malik, please read. And I actually wrote that on both sides just to make sure that I read it. Um, and it's got a list of rules. Now, this has come from Darren Stone, who is the head of the Department of Inhaled Vapors, or head div, and Pete Dermody who is the Head of Technology and Research Design, or Head TARD. So Head Div and Head TARD. I'm sure I can put words in front of that after I've tried it. Now the note has a list of rules. We've got number one, no mechs allowed, VV, VW only. Number two, try the juice at different power levels. Okay. Number three, it is advisable to use a dripper and not a tank. Fine. Number four, show dripping on camera. Number five, take it down. No vaping like a 15 year old girl trying to impress her smoking boyfriend. <laughs> okay. Number six, three hit minimum. If you can do more, go for it. And number seven, the Department of Inhaled Vapors takes no responsibility if you blow chunks over your computer equipment. Well, on that point, my computer equipment is over there, um, so if I blow trunks over my carpet, you will be responsible. And I can tell you now, when I got this juice, the smell, you know when you get vape mail and you open it up, you go, yay, vape mail. Um, the smell was that bad that my wife made me put the bottle in the garage to keep it out of the house. And now she's not in the house, so I'm going to vape it in the house. But I have opened the windows because I swear to God this stuff stinks. It, Jesus Christ. Just the smell. This is why I don't want to do this. Oh God. It's mainly garlic. I love garlic. But there's an undertone of feet. Which I guess is why it's called toe jam. And hurl. hurl. Quite jeez. Right, so, <laughs> oh, okay, I've got an old Vamo with an Igo L on top, that's just been re, re <sighs> Show dripping on camera, that's one of the rules, here we go. Oh, Jesus, that smell. Okay, I'm going to start at 8 watts. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, here we go. Garlic and feet. That's it. It's garlic and feet. <sighs> oh Jesus! It's hit the back of my throat. It's in. It's in my throat. That's disgusting. <sighs> my eyes are watering already. Jesus Christ! I don't fucking do this. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. It's, the garlic is sticking in my throat. And when I breathe out, I'm tasting feet. And I mean feet. Mouldy feet. Right, I'm going to take it up a notch. So on 9 watts. Oh, shit. <laughs>
Jesus Christ. Oh, that's not good. I put it... Imagine... Right, uh, you know how they used to make wine where they would squash the grapes with their feet? Imagine it was the walking dead and it was the zombies were crushing garlic with their rotten feet and then they took the pulp that came out the bottom and they put it in Forrest Gump's shoes before he ran across America and then when he finished they took the juice from his shoes poured it into this bottle and gave it to me to vape that is how bad it is I, I, right that's two Jesus Okay, taking up. I'm gonna go twelve. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go twelve. Oh shit. <coughs> oh. Nearly. Oh. oh, I hope you're finding this funny. Oh, the smell is just lingering. Okay, now, <laughs> one other thing I was told was that I had to do a nose hit. I'm not doing any more than three of those because that's just disgusting. Finished. Done. I've done my three. But I have to do a nose hit. So I'm going to turn it down. Back down to eight. Here we go. Another way. <coughs> right, Darren Stone, head div. Pete Dermody, head tard. Yeah, you are a tard and you are a div. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I've been Dave. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> and that was Davey doing a toe jam and hurl. Um, did you enjoy that, Davey? No, didn't look like I enjoyed it. I'll tell you what, I had a very large glass of wine after that. <laughs> Is that why your hair fell out? Yeah, yeah, we'll blame it on that. That's why I'm locked in here now as well. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, chat seemed to like that. Um, <laughs> Mike Brown thinks that that's why uh, your wife shoved him in the broom cupboard for tonight. Uh, and Entropy... It's my man cave. <laughs> Entropy, it's says, <laughs> Entropy says the Vamo goes to 15 watts. Just saying. There was no way I was going up to 15 watts on that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, listen, we've gone slightly over 45 tonight. So uh, it's time to say goodbye. Yes. Don't forget that... Uh, DE Talk has already started four minutes ago on the other side. Uh, so you can go straight across to that in about 30 seconds. Um, and then don't forget also tomorrow night it's Team Talk with the usual crew. Thursday it's VT Talk with Dave, Sav and guests. Who knows who will be there? Tune in and find out. Sunday it's Dave Tacklebox with Dave Kitson. And Monday it's the Haze Hour with Dave, Keith and Kat. Taking us back round again to next week for Vapor Scene. Say good night, Davey. Good night, Davey. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. Cheers. See
Vapacine is proudly sponsored by Health eVape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.